friends. Last Sunday in our Zoom worship service, I shared a little bit about the sort of the transition from the transfiguration from Epiphany to Lent. And I know that not everybody was able to make it. And rather than, I don't know, uploading a grainy Zoom video of a bunch of people's faces, we thought, I thought I'd just go ahead and record that again. So just a few a few things to help prepare us for Lent before we begin tomorrow on Ash Wednesday. So last Sunday, we celebrated the Transfiguration, which is when we tell the story of how Jesus was transfigured, when his inner radiance was revealed and Peter, James, and John saw his divine light. <clears throat> the lectionary gives us this story on the final day of Epiphany, which feels right because everything has been leading up to this moment, quite literally. The season of Epiphany begins with Jesus being baptized at the Jordan River, which is the lowest elevation of anywhere in the world. Then Jesus travels up to the high country of Galilee where he finds disciples, where crowds begin following him, and everyone starts asking, who is this man? Could it be that he's the Messiah? So Jesus takes a few disciples to the highest mountain in the region where he starts glowing with the, with the radiance of God's glory. And all of a sudden, Moses and Elijah show up, kind of confirming him as the, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And the voice of God calls out from a cloud and says, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. This moment is like the epiphany of all epiphanies. And then all the drama fades. Jesus heads down the mountain. And he turns his face towards Jerusalem. The tone of Mark's gospel changes. Jesus starts talking about his death and the Pharisees start scheming about how they will arrest him. Jesus knows where this story is going and so do we. And so we join Jesus on the road to Jerusalem as we embrace the season of Lent. <clears throat> And, and some of us love Lent, while others are a little less enthusiastic. I chatted with a few folks last week, a couple of whom said that they didn't like Lent because they remembered it as a season where they were supposed to feel extra bad about themselves. The message they heard was something like, you know you're a bad person, so do fewer bad things. Instead, go pray some more. I mean, that, that's actually the main thing I heard, but I even heard another person share that they didn't like Lent because they're just a naturally moderate person. And they don't find it spiritually moving to give up something they really weren't going to do anyways. And all that makes a ton of sense, especially in a year when we've already been sort of giving so much to prevent the spread of COVID. But our, our feelings about Lent also demonstrate how Christianity is focused more on the practices that we need to do rather than what those practices do to us. I mean, any Lenten practice like fasting or prayer or repentance is only as valuable as the effect it has on our personal and spiritual lives. And you know, the point of Lent is to prepare us for the suffering, the sadness, and the joy of Holy Week. So as we think about Lent, perhaps the question we should ask ourselves is, what could I embrace that would help me through a difficult season? Or what burden could I give up? What could I fast from? And, and that is sometimes a, <clears throat> a tricky word. And I mean, and, and fasting can look a bunch of ways. For, for someone like me, I 
Well, I do a mix of both. I do some traditional fasts. I give up alcohol because I'm, I'm not a naturally moderate person. I have to be intentional and conscientious. So I just, so I don't just like pour myself another glass of wine and then another after that. And you know, that self-imposed discipline is just a little harder during stressful times of life. So it can feel like freedom to simply step away and eliminate the question, to, to fast from something. But there are other kinds of fasts. Like I try to fast from my overscheduled, overly analytical life by taking 10 minutes to do mindfulness meditation every morning. And as, as we chatted more about it, uh, we discussed some folks fasting from being critical by taking on the practice of a gratitude journal or fasting from self-isolation by taking on the Lenten practice of, of calling a friend every Sunday afternoon. I even heard just today uh, a really wise and brave suggestion from someone who planned to ask their therapist what it was that they needed to step away from. But basically what I'm suggesting is that we look at the burdens that we carry every day in life and consider how we might embrace a season where we take on some practices that make our burdens a little less heavy. That's what we do in a season of repentance because that the Greek word for repentance simply means turning towards God in heart, mind, and spirit. Repentance is the ongoing process of changing and growing and, and really reorienting. Right? So it's it's not it's less about you know changing all the bad things that we're doing and more about growing. But that can be hard, too, because it does mean that we take an honest look at, at what's going on in our lives and where we need some attention. So to, to kind of finish up here, or actually, no, before we finish up, I want to return to our gospel story, that one where Jesus climbs a mountain with his friends, and he shows them who he really is. He reassures them that the hard road ahead will be worth it. it. It seems to me that Jesus needs to hear that he's beloved, not only by his friends, but by God. Jesus needs the support and affirmation to be able to turn his face towards Jerusalem. And that's what happens before he takes on this, this hard road ahead. He hears a voice reminding him of just how loved he is. So as we turn towards Lent, I want you to remember that, that we do all this because we are loved and celebrated by God and by our community. It's out of love for the world and for ourselves that we take on spiritual practices that help us be more loving. So friends, be strengthened by the love of our community as you enter Lent. And, and that will probably look different for everyone and that's fine. We, we have different needs, different burdens, different areas of our life that could use some attention for us to grow and change. And, and as sort of the point of our uh, Zoom session is to connect. So at this point in the service, we broke into small groups and you know spent some time catching up and then we reflected together on, on Latin practices that might help lighten our burdens. If you're watching this now, this is probably not the case. But as you prepare for Lent, I want to encourage you to 
take a little time and reflect on if there's a burden you could fast from or a practice you could embrace that would enrich your spiritual life this Lenten season. And that, that could be fasting from an attitude, a belief, or a habit, or it could be a fast from something like TV or alcohol or video games or whatever we use to escape the difficulties of life. Or this could be a practice like regular exercise that helps you feel connected to your body or some extra reading or journaling or prayer. Really, this time is about what feels like it will help you grow. And if nothing there sort of struck a chord with you, perhaps use some time to reflect on what's helped you in difficult times in the past and, and see where that goes. So friends, I pray that whatever this season has in store, you'll find renewed connection with yourself and your God. Amen.